So today we're going to focus on the question of was it an installed base? And then of course the questions that follow, what do I do with it and what's the, the benefit? And so uh, we actually have two really great panelists uh, who are frontline sales and customer service leaders uh, in their respective industries. So first we have Dan Garrison uh, with Baker Hughes. Uh, so Dan, uh, you know, Baker Hughes, he'll, he'll get into who is Baker Hughes, but he has uh, deep experience in the oil and energy space, uh, starting out actually in the field and now, uh, you know, working for uh, the OEMs. Um, so I'll, we'll, we'll get to Dan in a second, but welcome, Dan. And next, uh, we also have Ben Kilby, uh, who leads customer service for R.A. Jones. And I'll let Ben also describe R.A. Jones. Uh, ben has uh, spent decades in customer service uh, across a variety of industries. And so can, it kind of brings lessons learned from different spaces uh, into R.A. Jones. Uh, and it'll be great having Ben as part of the panel. So what I'm going to do is, is kind of, this, this will be a, a conversation and we'll kind of go back and forth between ben, uh, ben and Dan and sharing some of their experiences and challenges and lessons learned. But uh, kind of jumping into that, uh, you know, first, uh, Dan, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Maybe start off with, uh, you know, who is Baker Hughes? What's your role, your, your organization? And maybe a fun fact about yourself. Sure. Thank you so much for the introduction, Rob. Um, as you said, my name is Dan Garrison. I'm an inside sales specialist for Bentley, Nevada, which is a subsidiary division of Baker Hughes. Baker Hughes is a leading energy company uh, with seven or eight different divisions. And my specific division regards with condition monitoring for critical machineries. And we are involved in a wide range of industries going from your renewable energy sources, uh, downstream manufacturing and production facilities such as refineries, also power generation facilities. And uh, we're also in some of the industrial spaces as well. So I've been with uh, Finley, Nevada for about three years now. Before that, I was in various different uh, companies such as Slimmerjay and Old States in, in, uh, Industries, which are pipeline companies and uh, oil and gas companies as well. And a couple of my uh, hobbies are outdoor photography and enjoying nature and that sort of stuff. But one kind of fun fact about Texas is uh, for those sports fans out there, two Two uh, colleges just recently went to the NCAA Final Fours, and luckily one of the one of the colleges from from Texas actually was able to win the championship. So, unfortunately, that was not the, not the team from Houston, but at least one Texas team did. So, yeah, back to you, Rob. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, Baylor definitely uh, put on quite a show. Uh, so. Ben, uh, same for you. Can you tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, your role with R.A. Jones, uh, you know, how that fits in the organization and, and maybe a quick fun fact about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Rob. Uh, my name is Ben Kilby. Uh, I have been with R.A. Jones now for about four years. Uh, I am the aftermarket customer service manager. Uh, we have two different departments in the, uh, in the aftermarket team. That's field service and customer service. Our primary role in customer service is to process uh, spare parts orders for customers' machines, uh, for replacement, for maintenance, for break-fix scenarios, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's our primary responsibility. However, as customer service, we are kind of the gateway into the, into the company. Uh, we answer questions from invoicing to to deliver when we're gonna get parts, all that fun stuff. Um, I have spent a lot of time in the retail space from uh, consumer electronics. Uh, I even tried selling cars for a little bit when I was younger. That was quite an experience. Um, it, mostly in uh, cell phones, actually. I spent 10 years running a Sprint store uh, in Iowa. Um, Passions and hobbies, 
Uh, I am a I'm a football guy. <laughs> I, I love watching college and pro football. Um, I actually had the opportunity to play two years of semi-pro football uh, in 2010 and 2011 with a small team in Eastern Iowa. Uh, that was fun. I survived. I did not injure myself too terribly uh, in those two years. Um, but after after a knee surgery at 19. Uh, I was kind of playing on borrowed time, so I enjoyed that experience, but uh, those days are now behind me. Um, in, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, my wife got an opportunity, and we moved our family from eastern Iowa to Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, it is considerably warmer here uh, than it was in Iowa over the past few months, um, and there's a lot more fun stuff to do out here. In fact, they're, they're about to put in a new surf pool. Uh, and I had to look that up when I saw that come across the news. Uh, it's different than a wave pool. They actually create a constant wave versus one rolling wave after another. So you can actually surf in the middle of town, in the middle of the desert in Arizona some, after some time this summer. So... Um, but with that, I'll, I'll kind of turn it back to you and, and we can move on to the next uh, segment. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, you, I remember you saying it had been 110 for some record number of days. I think the, the surf pool will yeah, come in. Here. Yes, uh, it was 110 degrees uh, from sometime in the end of July to the middle of September, like 55 straight days or something. It was uh, not the summer to choose to move to Arizona. <laughs> we found that out. Wow. Um, so kind of jumping right in, um, you know, Dan, maybe we'll start with you. Um, you know, what are some of the challenges that uh, your, your organization faced prior to implementing an installed base data platform? Well, some of our challenges, I'm sure, are applicable to other companies. Uh, it's a lack of information or a lack of accessible information. We have multiple different platforms that we have as part of our business, such as SAP, Salesforce, Deal Machine, uh, ServiceMax. And to try and be able to pull information from any one of those individual sources, you need to know what you need to look for. And you need to know the specific place to look. And then you'll have to get out of that system to go into another system to find some more information. And that's one of the things I really like about an install based platform, uh, particularly in title, is it takes all that information from multiple different sources and consolidates it into a single location. And I know I am kind of jumping ahead, but that is definitely for anybody who is considering putting in an install based tool. Consider how you're going to pull all of your different available information into a single cohesive platform. Uh, that is definitely a key thing. And one of the things that I have found to be very useful in my job. Uh, another one of the challenges is being able to get applicable buy-in from all of the users, as well as the appropriate number of licenses. So you definitely want to kind of consider those, uh, those aspects when you're starting to develop any plans for uh, installation or improving your existing platforms. So back Great. To and Ben, what about you? What are some of the challenges that uh, R.A. Jones has faced in the past? Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I can definitely echo those, the, almost those exact sentiments from Dan. We, uh, we have a combination of product lines and over the years, you know, R.A. Jones had, a, had, had merged and acquired different uh, machine technologies. Uh, so our information was uh, scattered at best and getting it all into one functional platform that was easy to use, easy to see and operate uh, was key for us. Um, I, I will also, the buy-in, if you, you got to get the right buy-in from the right people because, you know, everybody deals with change at work. Sometimes we deal with change fatigue. Um, when you guys came along, uh, within about 18 months of us transitioning into SAP, and nobody knew SAP yet, so <laughs> we were trying to learn SAP, 
still and and in title. So just just kind of uh, managing that change is also key. It was one of our bigger challenges. So it sounds like the oil and gas industry and the food processing food processing equipment industry are basically the same, right? Uh, the same the same challenges anyway. Um, so. Dan, um, kind of switching back to you, uh, for, for Baker Hughes, what has having an install-based data platform uh, enabled? Are, are there, you know, results you can share in terms of, you know, revenue, customer engagement? Yeah, there are a few things, um, and I'll keep things general so that I don't get myself or anybody in, in Definitely. you know, yeah. hot water, but uh I've been able to utilize this installed base tool to develop a couple of different uh, key customer initiatives where we were trying to develop a corporate strategy to increase engagement. And of that, it entailed pulling all of the various different locations, purchasing histories, and also uh, information about like their services. Do they have the system one software that we offer and that sort of stuff. So there, that was very useful in, in pulling that information and being able to forward it off to the sales leaders to develop a corporate engagement strategy on various different customers. Another thing that we've been able to do is track a couple of campaigns. As much as I like the, uh, the platform deal machine that we use from uh, tracking the majority of our opportunities, it doesn't necessarily do a good job about pulling reports for specific campaigns. Whereas Entitle has the ability to create the, the campaigns and then track the opportunities and performance on that. Because I am one of my group's super users, I've been tasked a, a lot of times with tracking the performance and then being able to report the, that up on these campaigns. And so that's very useful. In one specific deal, we tried to get entitled to develop a predictive campaign, which was based off of the cyclical nature of purchases for all of our customers. And out of a hundred opportunities that they felt the, the customers either should have recently purchased or were about to do to purchase, we were able to successfully identify that slightly over 41% in both uh, estimated dollars and also number of potential opportunities did actually result in a, in a sale. So we're hoping to be able to, to pivot off of that and then use that as a way we can take these predictive models and then engage customers more in the future and try and catch them before they make those flow purchases. That way we can drive a better customer relationship by saying, we noticed that you're due to purchase this. That means you will probably need to consider this, this, and this, or y'all purchase these items. Those have gone out obsolete and here's what you need to do to be able to get to currently, current fully supported products. So. That's great, yeah. 40% uh, actionable and, and converting that to revenue. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty incredible statistic. Um, ben, what about you? What, what has having an install based data platform enabled for RA Jones? Um, one of the biggest challenges for us is we have uh, RA Jones is part of a Coesia network, which is a global company that does packaging, but we have uh, any, we have about eight distinct product lines and we service about 700 customers every year, uh, 700 customers who order at least one part from us or one, one order every year. Um, I have 10 people to manage that. Uh, so the biggest, one of the biggest challenges we have is just organizing the information of what's going on with this customer at any given time. And, and title allows us to get in and do that. I, I know what field service has done recently in there. I know what equipment they have at that facility. Um, so one of the nice things is we used to have to ask a customer, right? Because we didn't have any information or at least accessible information about what machine was where uh, in customer service. So a customer would ask us a question and our first question would have to be, you know, what's your serial number? Well, now I can go into Entitle and say, hey, I have record that your serial number is, you know, 17274. Is that correct? 
So it gives us, it gives the customers you know, a better understanding that we do know what we're talking about, right? <laughs> we know what you have, we know what you're using. Um, but uh, the things that we've been successful with are uh, the campaigns where uh, I was trying to move some of our customers to more of a preventative maintenance model instead of, uh, you know, I'm just out of this. So we started customizing and creating preventative maintenance kits that customers could order as one part number. Um, so Entitle helped me build a campaign that says anytime a customer has ordered 10% of this kit individually, it created an opportunity for us to, for them to reach out, somebody on my team to reach out and say, hey, we have this kit now, you bought you know, half of it last week, would you like some information on this kit? Um, that was successful. I don't have any specifics uh, numbers wise, but that was successful. Um, the other thing that they've done a good job with us it, or for us is when, when my inventory team comes to us and says, hey, I got all this slow moving inventory or obsolete inventory, um, I'm able to feed that those parts to, uh, to the entitle team and they send me back a campaign that says, hey, these are all the people who have bought these in the last three years. So then it allows me to go out to these customers and say, hey, you know, these are about, these are obsolete or I'm not moving these as fast as I thought. It, it gives me that I, I can go uh, a fire sale kind of uh, opportunity with customers. So uh, those are the kinds of things that we've done with it, um, that we've been successful with. Uh, but there is just also a ton of soft benefits to just that having your install base in a cleaner format uh, that, that I, as the manager, really enjoy because I can go get a snapshot of somebody's movement, parts, sales, history, all that fun stuff. Thanks. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Um, so Ben, kind of following up on that, um, what did it take to get there? How long did it take to implement an install based data platform? What, what were the challenges along the way? Uh, we started, uh, I, I want to say the initial uh, overtures were in towards the end of 2017. Um, and we were live, I want to say April 1st of 18, live and using it. Um, so it took a few months to get all the data organized um, for, for the entire team to dissect it and come back with questions, you know, what does this mean? What does that mean? So they could build their logic right. Um, and it's ever evolving. Uh, we're working with uh, Badri now so that we can turn in bills of material so that, uh, so that the predictive analytics can be even more accurate. Because uh, that was one of the things that, that my reps had at the beginning was uh, they would get an opportunity and they would spend 10, 15 minutes researching it to make sure that it was that they had indeed bought that part. Um, we, we've gotten a lot better with more specifics, part number versus part description. Um, in the early days, you know, the Entitle program might offer a, me to sell a customer a bearing for their machine. Well, uh, which bearing? I, I might have, you know, 700 parts that have the description bearing in it. So it, it's, come, it's gone through some evolution um, and it took probably a year for it to be smooth enough when we could use it efficiently. Because uh, early on, we were doing way too much research. My team didn't trust it yet. We, they were doing way too much research uh, to make sure that they were offering the right thing. But, uh, um, but install took about four months. And we were live at that time. Uh, and then just a few more months after that to get uh, competent and efficient with it. Great. And, and Dan, what about you? What are some of the challenges that uh, you faced and or are facing today? Well, some of the, uh, the challenges that, that we're facing was data accuracy. It goes back to the, the standard problem of data in equals data out. If you have obsolete data going into it, you're going to have obsolete data coming out, and so one of the one of the things that we we fight is having good, accurate contacts for some of our customers. And Entitled does a really good job about pulling all of the contacts and associating them with 
the correct locations, customers, however you want to phrase it. But the problem is if it's pulling out of SAP that hasn't been updated in 10 years, then you might have an awful, awful lot of obsolete old, old uh, customers to contact. Um, we're set up also on, on a system where the data has to be pushed in title every quarter. And so there's a little bit of lag sometimes on the, uh, the data not being quite fully up to date. And that kind of helps drive some of the problems that we have uh, with buy-in from our, you know, from my team personally, and also the outside sales group that they don't necessarily see the value in it. So those are a couple of them. We've been, like I said, we've been using it since late 2018. Um, it went live early, early on with us uh, once it all got built and we've used it on a bunch of different campaigns. Some of them were more effective than others, but you also run into issues such as end of quarter, uh, end of year pushes, competing campaigns. And so all of that stuff sometimes takes away the effectiveness of the tool. Yeah. Um, Dan, what's what's next for the Baker Hughes team and in, in, you know, going after your installed base and serving them better? Well, we're still trying to uh, continue and uh, promote Entitle as, as a wonderful resource, which I think it is. Um, it's a it's an uphill battle with some people who are not as sold on it. Um, I believe that uh, Baker Hughes is also trying to replicate something similar, which gets into another consideration. You know, I know I'm jumping ahead, but you definitely want to think about long-term longevity of whichever installed base platform you want to go with. If it's easier to, to outsource it for a team like Entitle, uh, and you don't necessarily have to worry about staffing, then that is the best thing to do. If you're going to move it in-house, you have to consider and weigh against the potential of a new product initiative taking your resources that are maintaining that in-house platform away or the, uh, the company deciding that this is not, not working the way it should be. And then that point in time, you're up a creek without any tools. So that's definitely something I would re recommend people who are planning an, a strategy is think about your long-term goals and how those can Im be impacted by changes in the market or changes in executive leadership and that sort of stuff. Yeah, the, the kind of some of the standard challenges of, of building something internally, how do you support it over its life cycle and, and you know, the, the development risks and so forth, yeah. Um, Ben, what's what's next for you know your team at, at RA Jones? Where are you trying to go in terms of uh, you know serving and, and um, you know driving growth in your installed base? Um, the the biggest initiative that we've got um, is what we're calling asset management. Um, in years past, our business model has been. You, uh, new equipment finds a lead, they sell a machine, we install a machine, and then we just give them a parts phone number and um, in the parts manual, and they call us when they need a part. Well, uh, I'm really trying to drive the customer service, uh, especially my team and, and some of the aftermarket people into more of a uh, proactive, uh, collaborative approach to customers and their machines and, and their, because and their, they're assets, you know, customers spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these machines so so that they can process their their consumer products and and meet customer demand so um i, I proposed uh, a program at the beginning of 2020 that involved more travel for the aftermarket team including myself field service manager uh and going in with field service technicians and unfortunately that got cut off at the knees when nobody was able to travel uh, in 2020. Uh, so we're really looking forward to using Entitle uh, and, and the, the, the install base uh, because you can do it by map, you can do it by region, you can do it by your product lines. So I, if, I, if I know I've got a customer's machine 
coming out of warranty in August of 2021, um, I can set up an appointment with them and then I can pull up in title and say, okay, who's around them? You know, where else can I go uh, to make my trip worth it? Because personally, I, I'm not a field service technician, so I am not a billable employee. I've got to go in and see multiple customers and, 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 and make that point of contact and generate revenue for my visit for it to be worth the effort of me going. So um, that's the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to using in Tidal is, is more of a collaborative and proactive approach uh, with my install base uh, moving forward and hopefully 2021 and beyond. Yeah, that's great. I think uh, uh, we're also looking forward to getting back out there and, and being able to, to meet in person uh, with our customers. So kind of last question to, to wrap up here, um, and maybe I'll, I'll start with Dan, you know, what's the one or two pieces of, of advice that you would give to someone who was, you know, kind of heading down this path of, of trying to figure out their installed base data and do something with it? Well, my first advice would be definitely um, contact the team at Entitle. Uh, anytime that I have recommended a slight change or an improvement, y'all's team has definitely been highly responsive and taken it into consideration. Definitely something that I appreciate and uh, I would definitely um, direct anybody who's interested to come to, come to y'all as uh, a uh, first, first choice. And then the other thing is like say, think about your long-term your, your long goals. And because a lot of that will drive which way they want to go with it, whether it be in-house or outsourcing it. Uh, and then lastly is make sure you work on your data quality, because if, if you have high quality data going into this, you can get an awful lot out of it. Um, that has definitely been my experience on it. And uh, those are probably the three things that I would definitely recommend uh, people to consider. Great, thanks. And Ben, what about you? What's the one or two pieces of guidance you would give to somebody who's uh, heading down this path? And I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot and say, you can't say the same things as Dan. Right, um, the, what, uh, what I would, uh, is, is kind of to, to start small, start on something you know you can control. Um, you know, my team, we deal with, again, like 700 customers, Something like, let's see, I wrote it down before I, uh, we took 21,000 parts orders in, in, uh, in 2020. So to ask that team of six people to stop and go through and title and add more to it and, and all that fun stuff, start small, start with the focus thing, show it can work. Uh, that'll help you build uh, buy-in from the people who are gonna use it at the end of the day. Um, Make sure you get somebody in your company to buy in. Uh, make sure you have back in for that so that they're not begging you for results after six weeks because it's going to take time for everybody to learn to use this. Um, and then uh, at the back end, that I'll also kind of echo and expand upon uh, what Dan said is, um, oh, now I just lost my train of thought. Uh, data, good data in yeah, means good data out. So make sure you, you've got that, that data cleaned up uh, and spend some time with them. And then one of the nice things that we've done with Entitle is, is a scheduled bi-weekly meeting. But that's, that's when I meet with the team. Um, I meet with Tom, who's uh, Tom Sturdivant, who, who's my customer success manager. Uh, and a, a couple of the data guys always join with us. Um, and not only are they responsive to suggestions or requests, uh, as Dan said, is they've been very open to, to answering, you know, what are other, other customers doing with this information? Now, they, they, they don't give me specifics, but, you know, hey, we have a customer user for this. We have a customer user for that. Um, and it might just open up a door that we hadn't thought of um, because they, they, they work across different industries. So, um, you know, use their expertise, good data, Start small, get buy-in. Those, those are the four things I would say. Great, I, I love it. Um, we've got a couple uh, 
audience questions here uh, before we wrap up. Uh, so the first one, uh, did the installed base data platform open up possibilities to do things you were not able to do before? Uh, either of you guys want to take that? Yeah, I'll take that one. <clears throat> yep. Definitely it has. It has allowed us to go on a more of a predictive uh, cycle, uh, which is what we're trying to hard to pivot to and be able to catch customers in advance of their needs. And um, like I say, it's still still a work in progress. We're still trying to get the buy-in, but we have been able to see where the predictive models have resulted in, in the ability to catch customers in advance and to be able to help drive some of those uh, outages and uh, other projects that, that are going on. And uh, one of the things that it helped us do, uh, uh, two little things is uh, when our field service technicians um, were, were not being utilized for whatever reason, it allowed them to pull up an area on a map and say, who's within my home area? Who can I go see? Who can I call on? You know, who, how can I try to get myself built this week? Uh, so that was nice. Uh, again, it kind of feeds in that proactive nature uh, that Dan was just talking about. And then the other thing is, uh, when I came to R.A. Jones in 2017 and the parts customer service parts sales team, they were not doing any, quote, follow-up. We didn't have any sort of uh, follow-up program. Customers put in a quote, and we either sold it or we didn't. Nobody, nobody took and did anything with it. Um, and title kind of gave us a, if, if I've quoted something, I can disposition it, it's sold, it's lost, why did we lose it? So it's giving me some more of that feedback as far as why we did or didn't get a sale. So uh, that was something we didn't have before, which is was a nice little feature of the entitled opportunity tracker. Okay, great. Um, got a couple other questions. We've got... Uh couple minutes left. Um, so uh, next one, um, and, and I think a couple of these have come up so far, but how did you use uh, an install based data platform for engaging customers more systematically? And I know there have been a couple answers. I know, uh, Dan, you talked about kind of, you know, uh, understanding some of your key customers and being able to be more proactive. Uh, ben, you talked about you know, reaching out geographically to understand. Any other examples of that systematic engagement? Yeah, uh, one of the things that we did is uh, by the, the customer segment and, and by their spending trends, uh, and Title helped us to recognize, you know, who was down over, over year to year so that we could reach out and, and try to find out if there was a reason for that. Um, and we can do that by, by customer location as well as customers overall, you know, because, you know, one customer might have four plants that we, that we operate with. So we can track it by customer, we can track it by plant. Um, and then you find out stuff like, well, we, we, we moved a machine out of this plant, so we weren't buying as many spares, okay? That makes sense. And then we can, uh, and Title gave us the opportunity to move that machine within the install base then so that we know where it is. Um, but uh, tracking who's buying, you know, it, it's selfish to us because it's revenue, but it really helps us understand what's going on in the customer's world uh, so that we can tailor our way to, to better serve them. Great. Dan, anything to add? And you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> well, a couple of the things that kind of tie in is we've had some campaigns trying to target uh, expired or uh, to, uh, due to be expiring soon maintenance and support agreements for our software platforms and right, there's a couple of different ways that you can track it this one is a very easy tool to be able to do it because it, it has those service contracts loaded in there and whenever you go to, to run a campaign it'll automatically pull up those customers that uh, are due to be expiring pretty soon and then it creates an opportunity so it's easy to track it. And then that gets into the to the dashboard functions where if you're reporting out on the effectiveness of a campaign, 
you can have everything in a nice graphical representation. It shows the stages of all of them. It also shows a, a little little uh, bar graph, which is nice and easy to take up to the executives. And uh, it shows the percentage won, percentage lost uh, or canceled. And if they are canceled, why did they get canceled? Is it because they're no longer in, in, uh, in business anymore, wrong timing, you know, whatever criteria that, that, that you want to see it tracked on, it can. That's great. I think that's something I hear from uh, manufacturers across verticals is the, you know, focus on service contracts, right? And how can we, uh, you know, kind of embrace the customer, right? And, and, and better serve them. Um, ben, for you, how much time has the, the platform, the install-based data platform saved versus looking for data in multiple different systems? That is, uh, that's a tricky answer for us. I didn't have anything before. Um, <laughs> we, we had our engineering program that was, uh, you, know, you could look at bill of materials and et cetera, et cetera. And then we had our ERP system. There was no uh, install based platform before, uh, nothing where we kept all that in the same place that my team had access to. You know, the sales team, the, the new equipment sales team and all those guys, they knew where the serial numbers were, but nobody ever provided that to the customer service team. Uh, and in that manner, it hasn't saved us time. We spend a little extra time uh, and entitled, you know, because we're going to there to see the quote and then I've got to jump to uh, SAP specifically is what we use to actually write the quote uh, to the customer. Um, however, I will I use the term soft benefits internally because I, I know more about what's going on at a customer facility uh, than I did before. So that little bit of extra time spent certainly is worth it for my team because we're able to serve the customer better. Great. And Dan, you mentioned earlier on the data was there but uh, in a bunch of different systems. It has installed based data platforms saved time in terms of gathering that from different systems? I would say it would. Uh, and I've got a couple of uh, specific examples of how it does, at least for me personally. Some of my other team members and outside sales don't necessarily take advantage of it the way it should be, but I can go into Entitle and rather than having to go through screen by screen or order by order in SAP to locate a specific part that a customer purchased, I can go to a single screen in, in Entitle scroll down, find the sales order, and then I know exactly where I need to go. Nice little time saver. And then there was a service project as uh, several months ago that I'll use an example. Um, we needed uh, the drawings from one project to be able to replicate on for another, another customer. The service guys had that information, but it's buried in, in their, their files and they, it, after a couple of days, they didn't respond saying we need, you know, here's, here's the information you need. I was able to go into Entitle, scroll through all the, uh, the service events for that location, find the correct sales order, and then get the drawings that were needed within five minutes where it had taken the service guys a couple of days with no response. So yep. it's huge. That's great. So we, we are at time. I noticed that the, the last questions were around kind of how easy and how soon did you start seeing results? I actually think we, we kind of addressed those earlier. You guys talked through the timelines in terms of, you know, starting to see, uh, starting to be able to use it in, within, you know, a few months and then, you know, ramping up over time to, to gain maturity and buy in and so forth. So um, I, I appreciate the, the questions from the audience and, um, you know, definitely, uh, DJ, we can probably go to the, the next slide. Um, so, you know, super quick kind of closing comments, you know, if, if I were to kind of summarize this, um, you know, challenges out there in terms of their, their the data exists somewhere, but is it accessible? Is it is in a form that's easy to access. Is it usable by the people who need it? Um, and then, you know, once you have an installed based data platform, right, lots of different things you can do, right? Uh, getting that better view of the customer, uh, being able to set up and track campaigns for that accountability, um, 
you know, being able to focus on corporate initiatives like uh, service contracts or, or key customers. Um, and then, you know, I think the thing that, that resonated for me that seemed to kind of uh, echo throughout was the change management, right? Uh, essentially the people aspects of things, right? How do you, how do you train? How do you incentivize? How do you make it part of the standard of work? How do you uh, get people to, to buy into potentially a, a new way of thinking about things and, and using data uh, in that engagement with customers? Okay, and yeah, I think the, the last thing I would say is, you know, Ben, Dan, uh, really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedules to join and, and share your perspectives. Um, yeah, this, is, this has been great. I think it's, it's, it's really helpful for uh, the community to hear, you know, what is the, the, the frontline experience and challenges and, and, you know, how you guys are working through those things. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.